This is uh, Dennis from My Wise Guys, and we're going to go ahead and show you how to configure some basic settings on V Bulletin, our V Bulletin installation that was part of uh, part one, I guess. So go ahead and first thing we're going to do is change the V Bulletin logo. Um, I love V Bulletin product, but uh, I don't really want to have their logo up there. I'd rather have my own. So um, let's go ahead and go to um, the Locate in fact, you know, I'm going to open another window because it's easier if I copy and drag. So let's do explore. Go to root of C. And we installed it on the web server. And vBulletin is under HT Docs. And we'll go to images and misc. If you scroll to the bottom here, you'll find the vBulletin 3 logo.white, which is what is actually up there. So we're going to go ahead and do a rename. The first thing I'm going to do is copy it. Then I'm going to rename it to that old. Of course, what I probably should have done is move this over there. So I'm going to do this. And there it is. Let's see if I can rename it. All right. Yes, and if I refresh this, it should now be the new logo. Okay, so the logo is done. Uh, next thing we're going to go ahead and do is install one of my favorite mods. Uh, it's actually Downloads 2, version 5.1.0. I've already brought down the, uh, the mod and extracted it. Maybe mod, maybe there's Downloads. Now they made this very easy. There's an upload directory. You just grab everything in there, copy it, go ahead and go to your htdocs folder, which is right there. It's the root. So go ahead and paste everything in the root. Now you have everything uploaded, so now we just have to add the XML file. So go to your admin, and at the very bottom there's plugins and products. You just want to manage your products and then add and import a product. We'll say browse, and we're going to go ahead and browse to um, where I extracted the file. Downloads to, okay, and we uploaded everything from the upload directory. Now we're just going to click on product, downloads XML, and that's going to import all the important information. Alright, now that it's done importing, all right, that's done importing. Uh, you'll see on the left-hand side, now we have a downloads. Not all mods provide this, but downloads does. Um, you'll first want to go in your settings and uh, change a couple things, like maybe you'll want to add some of the allowed file extensions, like doc files, or XLS, or XLSWs, or PDF files, or uh, PCAP files, or whatever. Just go ahead and add as many as you want. Um, images go down on a, on a separate line down here. Um, I also like to show the nav bar button, show the search, uh, show member files, comments, show comments, a lot of images. Those are the things that change right off the bat. But of course, if you look over here, if I refresh this, you'll see downloads, but I don't have rights. See, I don't have rights to this because you have to go into your group membership under user groups, user group, we're just going to handle the administrators group for now. And the first thing we'll see is downloads to permissions. And see it says can view files and it's currently set to no. So that's the default. So you'll want to come through here and change all of these to yes, or at least for the admin. You'll have to handle each user group the way you want to set them up. But um, I want all these to be set up. Um, and then I'll explain this one in just a second to exclude categories. But uh, let's go ahead and save this. So I'll scroll all the way to the bottom where it says update. And now, if I click on downloads, I'm now able to see it. But of course we don't have any categories, so let's go ahead and create a category. We'll go up, back up to downloads, categories. And we're just going to create a category, uh, which I say, um, and we'll just um, keep it simple, we'll call it Category 1. This thing is Category 1. 
uh, and we had no parent categories, but category one could now become a parent category if you're adding another one. And what I mean by that is uh, if you want a subcategory that has more detailed information, subcat1, subcategory. And then see, I can actually put it as category one, and now you'll see what I'm talking about. I click on downloads. Here's category one with a subcategory of cat one. So if I do this, and you know, you can keep scrolling down. So um, that's how you actually do downloads. It's a great program. Um, I use it a lot because I love files. <laughs> So and then you can actually say who gets access to this. Let's just say I don't want admins to see category one. So what I would do um, is actually go down to user group permissions, go to the group that you want or don't want to see something. In that thing I told you about the exclude categories, let's just say I don't want them to see category number one, which is cap one. So let's go ahead and say that. That's all I have to do is put the category number. And now when I actually click on downloads, I can no longer see category one because this group membership that admin's a member of is not allowed to see that category. Alright. Okay, seeing how I only have a few minutes left before my demo is done, I'm going to go through a couple things that you might want to change including the frequently asked questions that come up in the calendar. Um, let's go ahead and go through here real fast. You can actually see uh, frequently asked questions. You can add, if you click on frequently asked question manager, you'll actually see the ones that are available to you now, uh, just like downloads where you have the main category and subcategories. Um, the, you can add a new frequently asked question, just create a variable name. This is um, only letters and numbers, but it has to start with a letter. And this is just a variable, it's only for internal use. And then you actually create your actual title and text. And that's actually how you create um, your actual frequently asked questions as well. You just put the text of the frequently asked question here. Um, that's how you do frequently asked questions. In calendars, you'll actually see calendar manager. You click on that, there's a default calendar, but you can add a new calendar. Let's say one for your team or group or whatever. You can actually create a new one and then add permissions to that group. I go in here and you just add which groups these are all the groups that we have on our form now you can add more and just set set what they actually want you want them to have access to they can view the calendar they can post events or whatever you want to do you can customize it the way you want there's also a holiday manager you can actually add new holidays um, whether it's recurring or not um, it's very easy to use and very helpful you also might want to do um, here's the form manager Right now we just have the main form, but you can easily create new forms just like I showed you in download. This would be like category one, and this is the subcategory. Um, very easy to do, and you can actually do form permissions the same way. We add who gets access to what form, and um, you can show all the moderators. Um, it, it's pretty straightforward on that. Uh, the bulleted options, you'll want to come in here. And if you click on this, you can either show all settings, which I do uh, quite a bit, um, or you can actually click on that the item that you want to change. Um, you'll probably see you have downloads two options. This is the exact same thing as this over here. This is just like a shortcut. Um, it, you're very safe on changing things around um, in the v bulletin options. Um, the best way to learn is by doing. I appreciate you checking out the My Wise Guys demo on configuring your VBulletin website, and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you do, please give me a good rating. Take care. Bye-bye.